Welcome to Biz Help For You with host Candy Messer. Entrepreneurs like to focus on the big picture, like profitability, success, and a smooth running organization. But there always seems to be those little things like taxes, employee compensation, laws, regulations, and more. Now you can get the answers you need in one place. Join us today as we break it all down for you. Now, here's your host, Candy Messer. Hello and welcome to Biz Help For You with Candy Messer. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our last episode, Financial Planning for the Everyday Retiree Informative. If you are unable to join us and would like to listen to the show, links can be found on our YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as multiple favorite podcast platforms. If you'd like to receive notifications on when our podcasts have been uploaded, please like and subscribe. And if there are any questions that you have or topics you'd like to recommend, please reach out to me at media at abnp.com. Now let's learn a little bit about our guest today. Alvin Narcy has had an exciting journey buying and selling multiple pharmacy businesses in Australia over the past 16 years. He is known for his ability to simplify the fundamentals in growing retail businesses. Alvin has a framework that boils down to implementing the basics, focusing on cash flow and profit, and from day one, setting everything up so your retail business runs without you. Trained as a pharmacist in Melbourne, Australia, he bought his first business as a partnership a few years after he graduated from university. As a pharmacist, you're trained as a clinician, not how to run a business. With the help of coaches and mentors and a feverish appetite for freedom and adventure, Alvin quickly learned how to utilize systems and leverage to ensure these businesses were fulfilling his lifestyle goals. Now that Alvin has sold all his businesses, he's now embarking on his next adventure of traveling the world and helping other retail business owners create the lifestyle they want. Alvin's uniqueness is sharing the skills that retail business owners need to increase their income, provide value to their clients and customers, and live a life of massive personal freedom. So Alvin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Candy. Thank you very much for that great introduction too. (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you here. It's going to be an interesting topic. Um, but before I get into any questions I have for you, I would love for you to tell me a little bit more about yourself and how did you even get into what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So like you mentioned, I help retail business owners improve their cash flow and profitability. Um, before I started on this journey of traveling, which I've been doing for about nine months now, I used to own a pharmacy-based business. Uh, And during the pandemic, uh, my wife and I decided to move and get a bit of a sea change, if you will. So I sold that business. And when I sold that business, uh, I was working with the business coach at the time, Glenn. And Glenn was asking me, what are you going to do when you, you know, what are you going to do afterwards? And I was like, I don't know. I might buy another business. I'll see how I go. And uh, he really impressed upon me that, you know, I was such a good client of his because I was implementing things and doing all the things that he was suggesting And, you know, I like to talk and I'm pretty good with people. And so he suggested that, you know, I should be a coach as well. Of course, I dismissed him. I'm like, no, I'm not going to be doing that. Um, You know, that's what I don't think I'm as good as you, Glenn. And um, anyway, a month later, when we were just doing the final packing up before we moved to Germany, uh, I spoke to him again. And, you know, I really thought about what he said. And I thought, yeah, this could be really fun because it fulfills all my values. I get to travel. I get to experience new things, but at the same time, one of my core values is contribution. And I love to help people. Uh, Being a pharmacist is kind of what you do. So this way I get to help out other business owners. And, you know, I I niche down into retail because that's been my language in um, Australia. Anyway, uh, a large component of pharmacy is retail. So effectively Mm -hmm. we're running retail businesses. Um, So I speak the language. I walk that talk, you know, it's my kind of a jam. So, you know, that's why I'm, I'm helping, uh, a retail business owners to help them to do the same, the same way I was taught, really. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, one of the topics that we're covering, well, the main topic for today really is discussing morning routines. And I know as entrepreneurs, sometimes we are so busy with everything that we have to do. We think we don't have time, you know, to just put aside to actually do some things each morning. So first of all, how would you describe your morning routine and how does that help you have wins each day? Absolutely. We should ask my wife this question because I'm sure it annoys her. So my morning (laughs) routine is very consistent. I'm a man that likes structure. And for me, structure helps me operate more efficiently. 
So my morning routine, I am up at 5.30 a.m. Monday to Friday. Uh, I get up and I meditate. So I practice a particular kind of meditation known as Vipassana, uh, which has been working very effectively for me for the past eight or nine years or so. So I meditate for an hour and it might seem like a long time, but for me, it goes really, really quick. Mm -hmm. um, after I meditate, then I Monday to Friday, I'm either going to the gym or I'm going to the sauna. I alternate. And it's a, a beautiful walk down from the apartment where we're staying in Germany. When I come back, I, my next routine is to make Turkish coffee. So mm. if you speak to a coffee person, you know, they all have their uh, particular That's routine. Right. And I have my routine. And for me, it's almost meditative again and very therapeutic because I grind my coffee beans and I measure out the specific dose and I've got to be really present and aware uh, when you make it Turkish style on the stovetop and pour the coffee. And then, of course, you know, it's about waiting for it to cool down and then enjoying it. Um, and then almost then if I and then I'll have a shower. And before I start any sort of, I guess, what I consider work or for me is play is I will always read for 20 minutes. I'll set the timer. Uh, I'll read before I flip open my laptop. And what mm -hmm. I read in the morning is very different to what I read in the evenings. But what I read in the morning is more of a like a business type book, a motivational type book, something just to prime me for the day. So I'm constantly learning. So that's my morning routine. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if someone listens to that and says, wow, like mm. that's a lot of time that you're taking out of the day. I just don't have that much time for myself right now with everything that I have to do. So would you say that there's like a minimum amount of time that you should really spend, you know, that will give you the benefit of actually just having that routine or is even like five or 10 minutes enough to really just focus on yourself and do something before you get started? Absolutely. I think, you know, we all started from somewhere and I certainly didn't start jumping into this really long routine. It, it evolved mm -hmm. for me. And so for me, the very first thing that I implemented about 20 years ago was the meditation because my dad meditated. I understood it was beneficial, um, but I really couldn't find a methodology that could work for me. So long story short, I started with five minutes of meditation in the morning uh, and I sort of just built it up from there. And, you know, as I got older and uh, as I got into business and I started buying and selling, I started noticing a few things for me. If I didn't have this morning routine and I sometimes notice this on the weekends, I feel very scattered for the rest of the day. But going back to your initial point, yes, starting off small um, is always the way to go. You know, you, you want to build it up slowly, I feel. And this is what I tell my clients as well. And um, I think what's really important before the morning routine is sort of having an understanding for you yourself on what you want out of life and, you know, what, uh, what you desire, what your values are, you know, what really excites you, what are you aiming towards? Because I feel understanding that will sort of help you with preparing to set up a morning routine as such. Mm -hmm. So if someone is listening to and says, you know, well, I feel my most productive time is the morning. So I would much rather like just get up in the morning and like start doing some things because that's my best focus time. And then yes. maybe in the middle of the day, I'll do something like, is that okay too? Or do you still recommend kind of first thing in the morning? Mm, that's a really good question. Uh, I recommend just having some sort of routine. routine. I know there are some mm -hmm. people who aren't morning people or who are morning people and prefer to jump straight into getting their work done from what i've observed with other people and also working with my clients some sort of routine over the course of the day some sort of little mm -hmm. stable thing that you do all the time as long as you do it consistently and it energizes you like it doesn't drain you like if you know if writing or reading or meditating is not your jam and doesn't you know doesn't energize you then let's let's not do that let's let's do something mm -hmm. for you um, so yeah, there are people that are excitable and, and ready to go in the morning. And then there are some people that, you know, are ready to go at night. So I think it's about understanding what having a set routine can do for you as a person, and then trying <laughs> to fit that into your schedule. And of course, you know, your body type, if you want to believe that kind of thing, some people are morning people, nighttime people. I mean, I do. So yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not a night person. <laughs> I'm definitely a morning person myself. And I, I actually like to get some things done first thing in the morning too, because there are no other distractions. I don't have any, you know, client calls, staff 
you know, reaching out to me with questions. I don't look at email right now. You know, when I first get up, I'm like, what do I need to get done? That requires my focus that I, you know, want to get done before any other distractions happen. And so that's kind of what I do. And then now where I live, I actually have started, you know, a garden and we've planted some trees and I have some animals. So I work for a bit and then I'll stop and I'll go take care of that. And then I come back, you know, so that's been my routine for the last couple months now it's newer, you know, for me, but that seems to be working. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of different things can work for a lot of different people. And it's obviously, it's just a matter of trying to figure out what works well for you and, you know, Mm -hmm. sticking to it for a little while and, and noticing any benefits Uh, that might come forth. And if you're not getting the benefit, let's try something else. Right. So what would you say is really the benefit though? Again, if someone's listening to this and saying, okay, great. Like I get the concept, you're doing some things, you're reading, you're, you know, meditating, you're doing whatever you want to do, but really, is there a benefit to that? Or am I just going to add more stress to myself because I'm taking time out of the day to do this, that I could be focused on work? Totally. Yeah, I understand. It's, um, there is a benefit for doing this and it can be whatever, whatever it is you're doing. And I think the main benefit that happens when you have some sort of routine or or regular schedule over the course of your day, whatever it may be, I think it's the fact that we are actually becoming present and being aware Mm -hmm. in the moment that we're doing that. And there's something that happens to most people's brains when you start to do something regularly and you sort Mm -hmm. of realize that it, you know, it makes you a little bit calmer, a little bit more ordered and structured and more present in the moment. Mm -hmm. Well, what about someone who says, okay, I'm a very spontaneous person, right? I can't necessarily have a set schedule or a plan. Like I kind of go with the flow. Like what would you say to someone like that? (laughs) Yeah, I meet a lot of people like that as well. And, you know, I I would just say, how, how are you going? Are you sort of happy with Um, your output in life or your productivity or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve with other work or within yourself and are you generally content and you know there are heaps of people that don't have morning routines that are generally content and they're happy and that's cool so you know but you know if you're finding that you know you are a spontaneous type person and perhaps you're noticing your productivity is a little bit down or you're a little bit scattered during the day or you kind of lose interest in a few things during the day adopting this kind of a structure may help you um, a little bit, even though you're, you know, in this spontaneous or you think you're in this spontaneous mindset. But I would argue, you know, I like to think I'm spontaneous, but it's within the structure that I have, I'm allowed to be more spontaneous, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. So is there a difference between maybe having like a personal morning routine and maybe having something for business? Does it matter? Do you just want to have a structure and some kind of routine or should you have one for each? Like what, what about that? No, I don't think so. In my experience and working with clients and from what I've observed, just any sort of routine is, is going to be good. Something little that you do either for yourself or with your business, but it's amazing how your mind or your brain starts to, you know, organize itself when it's got a little bit of structure and it's constant that you're doing every day or, you know, a couple of times a week, or as long as it's consistent um, you'll find that the implications for the rest of your life just really flourish open. So yeah, mm-hmm. it can be, can be anything. Okay. So now if someone is listening and saying, okay, I, I understand the concept now I have not had a morning routine yet. I think it would be great whether, you know, it's really first thing in the morning or a little bit later. Um, but I'm not sure how to actually start implementing this. So I stay consistent. What would you tell them? Yeah, let's start with baby steps. So the first thing is let's find some sort of routine or structure that might excite or interest you, whether it's reading, meditation, journaling. You know, there are so many things that, um, you know, are are now apparent to everyone in the market. It's it's quite a big thing for everyone to know. So we just need to pick something that might interest you. And it might be a a simple routine as going to the gym or going for a walk or a swim or something like that. So I think it's picking something that resonates with you and your lifestyle. I think it's really important for consistency. And the next step is to really take those baby steps and just start to introduce it slowly. I think Mm -hmm. where a lot of people fall apart is they jump all the way in. And then, you know, you realize that, oh my God, I can't maintain this. But I think just starting small, five to 10 minutes at a time is really all you need. And, you know, as you 
as you start to do these routines, you will find, as, as I did, and a lot of people do, that your body starts to adapt and your body wants to, or your mind wants to actually do more. So you'll probably find yourself, okay, I feel like I can do seven minutes now, 10 minutes now. And then, you know, you, as long as you're consistent with it and you're present, you'll be able to find a sweet spot that will work for you. Mm -hmm. So someone is listening now and saying, okay, I, I now know I need to pick something that I enjoy doing. I, you know, need to make sure that I'm consistent, but my schedule sometimes fluctuates a little bit, you know, again, is it better to maybe just put that off like a day or two because my day gets crazy? Should I just push it later into the day or maybe it's even evening? Like, what do I do if some of these unexpected things come up that just kind of mess up my plan? Hashtag life. Yes, this happens all the time. I, I think one of the, if you're, um, you know, a lot of high achievers really put pressure on themselves. And, and I certainly did that in the beginning is that I've committed to this routine. I'm going to do it every single day, no matter what. And, you know, life does get in the way. And I think that if you're feeling overwhelmed, or there's a lot of stuff going on. I think you really need to give yourself permission um, to put that routine out just, just for this day and, until you feel like you're up for it. I mean, I was certainly the same this Monday. We just flew back uh, from Milan and, you know, Monday morning was supposed to get up at 5.30 and meditate and my alarm went off and I was like, mm, I'm not feeling it. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I slept in the extra hour and, and I and I went to the gym instead, but I missed out on my meditation that morning. And, you know, in the beginning when I was starting my routines and all this kind of thing, I really used to beat myself up. But now mm -hmm. I just sort of accept it and I go, okay, tomorrow's another day and, uh, you know, I'll get back get back on the horse, as they say. So I think it, the, the key is not to be too hard on yourself and, you know, be gentle and, you know, there is a life as well. Mm -hmm. So do you think it makes sense for someone who's starting out and needs to put together a routine, whatever, you know, time of day it is that they would have maybe like an accountability partner or should they just make sure they're putting it on their calendar? Like what should they do to make sure that they're actually being as consistent as possible? We know, like you said, life happens, but yes. if it's just, you know, oh, well, I just don't feel up to it today, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, totally. and that becomes a habit, which we don't want to have. So, you know, what would you say about that? Yeah, sure thing. Accountability partners, if you can get one, are always awesome. Because, you know, when it's like having a coach or working with a mentor, you know, when you have someone that you need to sort of check in with or someone that's going to mm -hmm. check in with you and say, hey, Alvin, how did you go today? Were you able to do X, Y, Z? You know, that's really going to, if you're motivated and if you've gone to the stage of having an accountability partner, it's going to make it really, really useful for you um, in sort of, you know, giving you that little tap on the bottom that maybe next time mm -hmm. you might be a little bit more vigilant in doing that. Having said that, you know, reminders in the calendar also are a great idea to start to build a habit. Um, so I think both of those strategies are going to be super, super useful for you. And I think what's also important, especially if you're in a family environment, is to let others know that you're going to be starting this routine or this little thing that you're doing just so they can support you, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Because certainly for me, you know, getting up at 5.30 in the beginning was very annoying for my wife. Um, but now, I've, you know, now she understands and I can be a little bit more stealth in the way mm -hmm. I get out of bed. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about traveling to different places too and enjoying that. So does that have an impact on your routines as well? Or is it still, you know, yes, I'm hanging out with friends today, but I still need to make sure I'm doing my hour in the morning of meditation or, you know, do you make adjustments when you're not just at home? Like, how does that work? Absolutely. So last week I sort of had a week off, so to speak. I was in Milan eating lots of food and I gave myself permission to uh, not meditate. So I was sleeping in, I was getting, we were getting up at eight o'clock, eight 30 in the morning, which is quite long uh, later in the day for me. So yes, I definitely give myself permission to um, take the time off when, when you need to, depending on what mm -hmm. you're doing. If it was a business trip, I'd try really hard to get up in the morning. If not, I would have my Kindle with me to do that little bit of reading before I turn the laptop on. So I think it really depends on, you know, when you're traveling and what you're traveling for, if you're relaxing on a in vacation mode, certainly, you know, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to give yourself permission to do that. But if you're working, 
um, you know, really consider trying to hold as much of your routine as you can. And I think right. when it boils down, what it boils down to is just not to be so, you know, give you a lot of people are really hard on themselves when they start to do these routines. And I think it's really important to be gentle and, you know, give yourself permission to, you know, take a day off or two. Mm -hmm. Right. So obviously I'm hearing, you know, it's okay, let things go, you know, especially if you're on a vacation or something. Um, but when does that kind of letting it go and giving yourself permission mm -hmm. become getting yourself out of the habit of, yes. you know, taking care of yourself? Yeah, totally. So that, you know, that's happened to me a lot of times as well. I think it's really important once you sort of come back to your regular work in my case work routine or a regular routine with with work and that kind of thing i think it's really important to start to get back into that rhythm again and yes mm -hmm. you know you might be you know it's very easy to continue to be in that holiday mode but i think what always does it for me is i just sort of reflect and i do an evening journal as well so that's another routine that i do but i sort of reflect on you know so today i didn't do my meditation but you know i will do it again tomorrow. So I think it's, you know, just about getting back on the horse as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's better to still just have it as like your own personal routine that you are doing? Or do you think it's better for some people to maybe have like a partner in that? So maybe their routine is like you said, going to the gym and working out. So they have a friend that they meet up and, and do that with versus, you know, someone who might just enjoy reading a chapter in a book. Like, does it matter? like to make sure that you're staying consistent? Yeah, that's a really good question. I really think it depends on the individual and I really think it depends on what you're trying to achieve. From just from my observations and you know working with clients, I think we have better success when the morning routines are for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um because, you know, I think uh, one of the great byproducts like I mentioned before of having some sort of morning routine or any sort of routine is that it allows you to be present and allows you to actually get more done. And so certainly, you know, you can you can do it with other people, but I, yeah, I've, I've just experienced it to be a lot better and a lot more beneficial for you when you sort of do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of makes sense to me too, because I'm thinking, you know, what if like your friend says, oh, I'm not feeling well today, so I'm not going to go to the gym. And you're like, okay, well, then I'm not going to go to the gym yes. or, or something like that too, right. right? So you might give yourself an out when maybe if you were doing something on your own, you would have still done it. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So do you have any other like tips that you want to share with someone about how they can actually start implementing this and, you know, make sure that they're taking care of themselves before, or, you know, whenever it works so that they aren't just overworking themselves as an entrepreneur. Yeah, absolutely. So I think as an entrepreneur, like I mentioned at the beginning, when we started to have our discussion, I think it's really important to get an understanding about what you want as an individual, what your values are, and really what you're working towards in your life, because your vision, so to speak, will drive the rest of what you want to achieve or what you want to do forward. So I think that's really, really important. And the second part is to pick a routine, something that resonates with you. You might have read something or seen something. And let's just start slowly and try and be consistent and then build it up slowly. So you know, rather than jumping in, let's just keep it really, really simple and build up slowly. And remember, this is a, a long term play. You know, the mm -hmm. um, the benefits of having a routine are found sort of manifest themselves slowly over time. And a lot of people try and jump in. And, and that's that's a really good cause of failure because you're trying to get a get a result so quickly or you're trying to do something mm -hmm. for too long um, from the beginning, from the outset. So if someone is starting and they're saying, okay, I'm going to give myself, you know, like 15 minutes to sit down, I'm going to read, you know, a chapter of a book, or I'm going to do, you know, whatever it is that they decide they want to do. And you're saying, well, at least start slowly. Yes. How much time should you just say, okay, I'm going to do it for 15 minutes and then maybe start adding time. Do you do it for three months, six months? Does it, you know, do you have like a kind of a schedule that you should start implementing or is it just as you, you know, start realizing like this is important i can add more time like how does that work yeah sure thing yeah i wish there was a prescriptive formula but it really depends on what we're doing 
uh, or what you're doing, I beg your pardon. And it really depends on how you're feeling at the time, because we really want to set ourselves up for success. And, you know, like anything in life, if we sort of try and eat too much really quickly or bite off more than we can chew, we can, it's very easy to fall off. So, you know, this is where it's, it's, you know, you want to use your intuition a little bit and just feel, go with how you're feeling, which for a lot of people is very difficult. You know, if you want a concrete kind of an answer, I would just say, let's just start, let's just go with it for three months. You know, there's that old 90 day thing before you develop a habit. And then Mm -hmm. we can start looking at increasing it from there. Right. Well, I know this has been interesting and lots of great information, uh, but I want to ask if you have an offer that you would like to share with our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So what I can uh, do for your listeners is we can do a really quick 15 minute value strategy session to help you sort of understand, you know, I was talking about what's important in your life and uh, trying to figure out what your values and your vision and mission in life is. And for the first three listeners that mentioned, uh, you know, get in touch with me to let me know that you heard you on your show. Uh, I'd love to sit down with them for 15 minutes and do a quick um, sort of, you know, value session with them to figure out what their mission and, and vision are for themselves. Perfect. And how can our listeners connect with you? Absolutely. So I'm all over the internet. The best place to get in touch with me is on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, look for my name, Alvin Nasi, and uh, just send me a message. Tell me you heard me on here and uh, yeah, we can continue the conversation. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Alvin, for being a guest on my show and sharing your expertise on this topic. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Candy. Thanks for having me on. Mm -hmm. And I also want to thank you, the listener, for tuning in. I hope you found this topic interesting and then answered some of your questions about the importance of morning routines. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to Alvin, or you can send us a message at media at abandp.com. And would you please share our show information with those you know? I'd really appreciate your support. I hope you can join us for our next episode, Stop Discounting, and instead add value add incentives. And please remember you can connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is abandp.com. You can also find the podcast posted on multiple favorite podcast channels, including iTunes, Google, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Until next time, have a great week. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next Tuesday. Have a terrific week.